George Herbert Walker Bush always seemed destined for great things. At 18, he was the U.S. Navy's youngest ever aviator. Two years later, he was a war hero. Flying over the Pacific in 1944, his plane was hit by enemy fire, but he remained in the burning aircraft to complete his bombing mission before parachuting out. After a glittering college career, he set up his own oil company before eventually turning to politics. Senior roles included serving as ambassador to the UN, envoy to China, and director of the CIA. He lost out of the 1980 Republican presidential nomination to Ronald Reagan, but was a loyal vice president to the victorious candidate. In 1988, he tried, and this time he was successful. His campaign became defined by a single soundbite. Read my lips. No. He was inaugurated in January 1989, just as the Berlin Wall was about to fall and the Soviet Union collapse. I, George Herbert Walker Bush, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. That I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. He was seen as a competent president, but not an inspirational one. Even he acknowledged he lacked a grand vision. The man who'd promised not to raise taxes responded to an economic crisis early in his presidency by raising taxes. But he did have an impact on the world stage. He negotiated nuclear arms reduction with the Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev. In 1989, he sent 24,000 U.S. troops into Panama to restore democracy following a military coup carried out by General Noriega. But his biggest decision was to take America to war against Saddam Hussein's Iraq after the dictator invaded Kuwait. Just two hours ago, Allied Air Forces began an attack on military targets in Iraq and Kuwait. These attacks continue as I speak. The Gulf War was viewed as a military and diplomatic success for George Bush. But his decision to order the end of the U.S. operation without removing Saddam from power left unfinished business. It was left to the 43rd president of the United States, Bush's son, George W., to complete that mission with the second Gulf War. Bush's failure to revive a faltering economy saw him lose the 1992 election to Bill Clinton. In retirement, he remained active, working on causes that mattered to him. In 2005, he joined forces with a former political adversary, Bill Clinton, to appeal on behalf of people affected by Hurricane Katrina. Remarkably, he celebrated both his 85th and 90th birthdays skydiving, despite no longer having use of his legs because of Parkinson's disease. Seven decades after jumping out of that burning plane over the Pacific, he'd come full circle.